Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video we begin with the detailed study of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions for two main uh, operators which we've already seen. First let's look at how we actually get to the eigenvalue equation in the first place. So let's say we have an operator Q and it has a determinate state where if you measure this every single value you get will be equal to small q. So in that case sigma squared that will be the variance will be 0. That's its value is u minus average of q whole squared and that can be written as psi with this q whole squared psi and we can take 1 q minus q to this side q minus psi inner product q minus q psi. But this is the inner product of a vector with itself and its value is equal to 0. We know that that can only be true if the vector itself is 0 which means q minus q psi is equal to 0 or q psi is equal to q psi. Remember capital Q is an operator and small q is a number. So this is what is called an eigenvalue equation where small q is called the eigenvalue of the operator capital Q and psi is the eigenfunction. And in this case what we are finding out is a particular state psi such that when you operate q on that psi the result is the same as multiplying psi by a single number small q. We've already seen that the Schrodinger equation basically is an equation of this type which is h psi is equal to e psi where h is the Hamiltonian operator which is p square by 2m plus v and E is the energy and this is also another form of eigenvalue equation. So now we'll look at the eigenvalue equations for two very specific and very commonly used operators that is the position operator and the momentum operator. So let's start with the position operator. So in one dimensional motion the position operator is simply multiplying the function by x and so let the eigenvalue be y and the eigenfunction be gy of x. It has to be g of x but for every y it will have a particular value so it will be gy of x. Then the eigenvalue equation would be x into gy of x is equal to y into gy of x. But if we look at this equation closely we can easily see the solution. It has to be 0 everywhere except where x is equal to y because otherwise this equation won't be able to be satisfied. Right. So the function has to be 0 everywhere except where x is equal to y and that function is called the Dirac delta function. gy of x is equal to a delta times x minus y. This is a function which is 0 everywhere that x is not equal to y and at the point where x is equal to y it is non-zero it has the value a. Now in this case we do not have the original type of orthonormality but it, there is another separate type of orthonormality which we can see for functions like this in terms of the eigenfunctions and that is what is called Dirac orthonormality. It is basically an analog of orthonormality when it comes to infinite dimensional functions. So our original definition of orthonormality for two vectors fx or fm and fn was this is equal to delta mn where delta mn is 0 when m is not equal to n but it is non-zero when m is equal to n. This is when you have a discrete number. When you have a continuous number of indices which is true for a function you have Dirac orthonormality which basically states that integral minus infinity to infinity if we try to calculate this gy dash star x into gy of x this is the inner product of gy dash with gy dx. This will come out to be mod a squared integral minus infinity to infinity. We are putting the value from here into this equation. Delta x minus y dash delta x minus y dx and that just turns out to be mod a squared delta y minus y dash. And we can just uh, for the sake of orthonormality, for the sake of normalization, we can take a is equal to 1 which makes this equal to 1. So this orthonormality now becomes gy dash with gy is not equal to delta mn or delta y dash y is equal to the direct delta function 
y minus y dash. And now if we uh, look at the fact that the eigenfunctions are also complete, that tells us that any other function in this domain, in this space, can be written as a linear combination of these functions. So any other function would be, let's say, f of x, and we can write it as integral minus infinity to infinity, c of y, let's say some coefficients depending on y, gy of x dx, meaning for every uh, function f of x, we can choose appropriate gy such that this is true. But this becomes trivial in the case of the direct delta function because this is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity c of y delta x minus dy. And from this, you can directly see this trivial case that c of y is equal to f of y. Or here you can see f of x is equal to c of x. So in this case, the coefficients are simply the values at that particular point. So the three things we see here is that uh, the eigenvalues are simply a value y. The eigenfunctions are delta of x minus y, which is a function which is zero everywhere that x is not equal to y. And at the point where x is equal to y, it is y. And that sort of makes sense because if you look at the graph, it will turn out to be something like this. Meaning when you measure the position, the only non-zero probability will be at the point y. Everywhere else, the probability of finding the particle will be zero. The only non-zero probability of the finding the particle would be at y. Also, these eigenfunctions exhibit what is called Dirac orthonormality, and that tells us that g y dash inner product with g y to delta of y minus y dash. And finally, all these eigenfunctions, the way we expect them to be for the case of a Hermitian operator, are complete, which means every other function f of x can be written as a linear combination of g y of x. And once again, because you have infinite terms, the sum here has been replaced by integral. If this was a sum, we would have had delta y y dash, the chronicle delta. But because this is an integral, we have the direct delta function. Next, let's look at the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of the other common operator in quantum mechanics the momentum operator. So the momentum operator in one dimension is h by iota, h slash by iota, d by dx. And so what we'll do is we'll assume that we have an eigenvalue p and an eigenfunction or sometimes also called an eigenstate fp of x which depends on p. So the equation will be eigenvalue equation d by dx of fp of x is equal to p f p of x. And we can solve this. This tells us d f p of x by f p to iota p by h dx, which tells us f p of x equal to some constant a e to the power iota p x by h. So this is the Eigen function and p is the Eigen value. Now, the thing we notice here, again like the previous case for position operator, is that this is not square integrable. And so, what this looks like basically is an infinite wave of a particular value of a wave number going in this direction, but you cannot integrate this from minus infinity to infinity. However, this type of eigenfunction also admits the kind of Dirac orthonormality as opposed to the normal orthonormality which we talked about in the position vector. So let's look at the inner product of two functions. It would be minus infinity to infinity f p dash star of x into f p of x dx. And this will be equal to mod a squared. Again, a, we can choose whatever we want to get the normalization constant integral minus infinity to infinity e to the power iota p minus p dash x by h dx. But we know what this is. This is a very famous integral. You've seen this in a mathematics class. This is equal to mod a squared pi h delta p minus p dash. We know that when we integrate something like this from minus infinity to infinity, it gives us the Dirac delta function. And so if we assume a normalization constant such that mod a square is equal to 1 by 2 pi h dash or a is equal to 1 by of 2 pi h dash. In that case, we can find out the eigenfunction which will obey the, uh, the value, the relation f p dash f p is equal to delta p minus p dash. 
which is again similar to the Dirac orthonormality we saw for the position vector. So in this case the eigenvalue is p and the eigenfunction is f p of x is equal to 1 by root of 2 pi h e to the power iota p x by h. Now the final thing left to see here just like because this is a Hermitian operator just like the position operator the set of eigenfunctions will be complete which means that any other function f of x can be written as a linear combination of these functions. So if you have any function f of x it can be written as integral minus infinity to infinity again the sum is replaced by the integral c of p which is the coefficient depending on p f p of x dp so f p of x I can write it as uh, I'll bring 1 by root 2 pi h here and then what is left is e to the power iota p x by h dp but this is an equation for Fourier series and we already know what the inverse equation for this is if you want to calculate the value of c of p and that comes out to be 1 by root 2 pi h integral of minus infinity to infinity f of x power minus iota p x by h dx and so both these problems the eigenvalue problem for the position operator and eigenvalue problem for the momentum operator give us pretty much the same results which is because they're both Hermitian operators all the eigenvalues are real and the eigenvectors obey what is called the Dirac orthonormality and the eigenvectors eigenfunctions are complete which means that every function or every state now what does this mean that in terms of position you could have whatever state you want and that can be seen as the sum of many different Dirac states and you could have any particular state of momentum you wanted but that could be seen as the sum of many different waves like this so this is basically the essence of Fourier series anyway which is that any complicated function as long as it is periodic can be represented by the sum of the signs in with different coefficients in the next video we will derive rigorously for every two quantities which do not compute especially position and momentum the uncertainty principle so we will be able to finally derive the principle that you cannot determine the position and momentum simultaneously if there is a small spread in position there has to be large spread in momentum and vice versa thank you